Now more details have surfaced on the U.S. raid that killed Osama bin Laden. Ray Suarez explores that story. For all the detailed planning that went into the bin Laden operation, there were moments when everything could have gone wrong. Some of those have been recounted in a detailed article in the latest New Yorker. The Navy SEAL operation began in Afghanistan as helicopters took off for the Pakistani town of Abbottabad, where bin Laden was believed to be living. Writer Nicholas Schmidl joins us now, and in your telling, it turns out that one of perhaps the most critical decisions was made before the raid even began, having more helicopters available. That's right. It was a last-minute decision by the president that he wanted um, the SEALs to have the ability to, quote-unquote, fight their way out of Pakistan. And so the quick reaction force, which was comprised of the, uh, the Chinook helicopters that, was, that were to leave about 45 minutes after the initial two Blackhawks, which was the assault team, uh, that number was added or was up to four at the last minute. And that turned out to be important because one of the helicopters in the raid crashed, right? That's right. So uh, as, the, as the first Black Hawk uh, made its way over the target, it, ex it experienced this, this um, bizarre aerodynamic phenomenon called settling with power, where the pilot uh, begins dropping, the helicopter begins falling, and the pilot has the inability to, to, to elevate the helicopter. And uh, so that helicopter ultimately crashed, and they had to call the, one of the Chinooks in. A lot of what was waiting for them was just going to be an educated guess. Was there much resistance in the compound? Well, there wasn't. I mean, the notion for the past few years, we've, we've always thought that bin Laden was going to be surrounded by this, this team of 20, 30 bodyguards that were all going to be ready to sort of go to the death for him. And, and it ended up inside of the home on that night. Uh, it was bin Laden's courier and his brother and bin Laden's 23-year-old son were the only adult males in the house. One less talked about member of the team while explosions were going off and rounds were being loosed from weapons was standing outside the walls. Who was he and what was he doing there? Well, they had brought along. So in the first helicopter, there were 12 SEALs. And in the second helicopter, there were 11 SEALs, um, Cairo, the, the Belgian Malinois dog, and then a Pakistani-American translator. And he was out there. The translator was out there essentially to, to hold the, the curious um, locals and re local residents at bay and, and to tell them that, you know, there's a security operation going on. And, of course, this is an individual who looks like a, who's a Pakistani who's wearing a shawar kameez, and he's telling them that there's a security operation going on. Go back to your homes. And people simply sort of took him at his word and turned around and went home. When the team was making its way through the building, were they working by educated guests? Was there any intelligence about the layout of the interior of the building? Very little. Uh, the satellite photos that were taken uh, of the compound had been taken pre-construction and post-construction. And so in the rehearsals leading up, to, uh, in the weeks leading up to the operation itself, they had practiced with a range of, of scenarios, what the house might look like inside, but they really had very little idea. And uh, so they broke into three-man fire teams and they began to sort of clearing methodically, but, um, but they had you know, no idea what they were encountering as they went along. SEALs did have to kill several men on the way deeper into the building, but finally they fought their way into Osama bin Laden's set of rooms. What did they find? Well, interestingly, to get up to bin Laden's room and even to get from the first floor to the second floor, uh, there had been metal gates that had that were locked metal gates preventing individuals from, from ascending those floors. So there was such a metal gate at the base of the of the stairwell leading from the second to the third floor. So the three seals blasted through that gate, reached the top step, turned to the right, and at that time, at the end of the hallway, they uh, saw bin Laden poking his head out the door. How were Osama bin Laden's last moments described to you? Last moments were described to me that, that these three SEALs proceeded down that hallway, pushed open the door, and uh, there were two women standing in front of bin Laden, one of which was his fifth and youngest wife, Amal, um, and another woman that we don't know, we're not 100% we're not sure of the identity of. Uh, but Amal was, was uh, screaming hysterically at the men, at the SEALs in Arabic, and uh, she began approaching them as if she were going, no one knew exactly what she was going to do. The assumption was that she might have been wearing a suicide vest. So the first SEAL shot her once in the calf to disable her, and then wrapped her in a bear hug, and drove her and the other woman off to the side, at that point sort of willing to, to have soaked up the explosion to be able to preserve the mission. And the second SEAL then uh, came through the door and shot bin Laden once in the chest, and as he began falling backwards, once in the head. So just to clarify, the bear hug was to shield others in the room from the blast if there was a suicide vest? Exactly. To soak up, I mean, to, to, to absorb the impact of this, of what could have been a suicide jacket, a suicide blast. Did Osama bin Laden resist in any way? 
no, he was unarmed, um, and and he, you know, I sort of asked whether there were any final words or any uh, any sort of dirty, dirty, hairy moments, and there were none. He, uh, it all sort of happened very split second, but he did not resist. How did you find out about this? With the course of the past two months, I've. Uh, been able to to find a number of people with intimate knowledge of the raid and have been able to sort of build piece by piece and be able to confirm every aspect of this multiple times and and from that you know was able to develop this account have you spoken to anyone who was actually on the raid i have not spoken to any of the 23 seals who are on the raid now the helicopter that crashed was f chock full of advanced technology how did they handle that? They couldn't bring it back with them. That's right. So uh, the pilots of these helicopters, for these very purposes, carry a hammer under the seat. And so uh, the pilot began smashing the, the instrument panel to disable all of that. Um, and in the meantime, a demolition team, after he'd, smashed, after he'd been working on smashing the instrument panel, a demolition team took over, uh, used thermite grenades, C4 charges, and eventually they, they exploded the helicopter. It's refreshingly old-fashioned. Well, it's been some, some time now. Do we know much about what was in all the material that those seals took away from the compound? Hundreds of pounds of it. Right. Uh, things have emerged over the course of the past couple of months. Um, the, the assumption is that the assumption was that Bin Laden uh, was more of a spiritual head and didn't have much of an operational role in Al, in, in Al Qaeda. Um, some of the intelligence has suggested otherwise <clears throat> that he was that he was trying to uh, promote a 9/11 um, anniversary attack. That there were plans, we don't know to what extent, to assassinate uh, General Petraeus, the president, um, and there was a, plans to uh, stage an attack on U.S. train facilities as well. But we don't know sort of at what stage in the development any of those were. And I guess they're still looking at it, right? I'm sure. Nicholas Schmidl of the New Yorker. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me on. Mm -hmm.